Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. Well, we conclude our week-long recap of the 51st Karifta Games by looking at an area of the sport that is often overlooked. With over 700 of the region's best junior athletes gathering in Grenada for three days of pulsating track and field action, the Caribbean Regional Anti-Doping Organization, in partnership with World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, seized the moment to descend on the Spice Isle with the mission of educating athletes about clean sport. Rado's Executive Director, Dr. Sasha Sutherland, joins us on Zoom to tell us a bit more about this initiative. Welcome to the Sports Max soon, Sasha. Hello, Maria. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. So good to have you on. And of course, I'll start by asking you to just give us a bit of recap as to the initiative and what was outlined in Grenada. Yes. So as you, you introduced the World Anti-Doping Agency, um, let me preface it by saying we had a Ministers of Sport meeting in Jamaica at the start of the year and WADA pledged a uh, made a pledge, made a commitment to the region that they would invest more. And Carifta was the start of an athlete engagement program as part of WADA's commitment to ensuring we do education before testing in our region. So we spent the three days with Olympians Mikkel Thomas and Alian Pompey from Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana, respectively. In Grenada, we also had Rafael Rezende from WADA Stakeholder Engagement Team and Marsha Boyce, our communications manager in Grenada, just doing athlete outreach, values-based education, providing them information on, you know, um, testing and values-based education and making sure they, you know, had ethical decision-making in sport. And so we used the WADA quiz, the playthrough quiz. Eight out of 10 gets you a hat. Uh, you get to meet the Olympians. Um, we're all part of one playthrough team. And this was our way of engaging with athletes at, at a younger age before they got to the elite level. So the idea is that if education is important, we want to make sure the education starts at a younger age and that we're engaging with our junior elite athletes before they enter that international arena and they are aware of their rights and responsibilities as, as athletes. Rather than doing it in the classroom, it was all about making sure we had a zone that was fun, engaging. Uh, we got to engage with some of the medal holders. We had some dignitaries present as well. And we even have had athletes show their appreciation for having that kind of information shared with them at Carifta. So all in all, a fun weekend for clean sport and a very engaging one with the athletes. Yes, yeah, so important because, you know, many a times when these doping cases come to light, one of the first things are those looking on at what's happening say is that the bodies in charge didn't do enough to educate. So I feel as if starting at such a young age is so important because if you don't get it then, you're going to get another educational course on it and it's going to be drilled into you to the point where that will no longer be an excuse that you didn't know. So for me personally, I feel like it's a good start. Uh, I'll ask you though, what was the response like from the athletes? Because do you feel based on you know the feedback that you got, that they received it in the manner that you would like? You know, one of the key things for us, especially in the region, we love face-to-face -face education. We love engaging with athletes. And we're going to do our evaluation and our impact assessment in about a week or so when we sit with WADA and just kind of debrief on the program. But from face value, we always see that athletes receive it well. They, they pass by the booth and they're kind of like, uh, I don't want to be tested. But then when you say, no, 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 it's not testing. Come, it's just you take a test. You can win a hat. Um, they they want to win. They want to know and we have a lot of athletes who are saying oh yeah i kind of actually went through this before we have some of this information but i don't understand this and so you get the opportunity to transfer knowledge there 
so beyond just telling them you know play true clean sports is great you get the opportunity to engage them on anti-doping rule violations and that the fact that testing positive is not the only way that you can be guilty of an anti-doping rule violation you get to speak to them about supplementation and nutrition you get to tell them about you know if they're in a registered testing pool what the requirements are so i would say there was a really good response from the athletes we had many a person go to their camp and come back with their friends and i think that's a good indication that we're transferring knowledge that we're talking about values-based education we're raising awareness but they're also getting the information the anti-doping educational part of it outside of the classroom in a way that's fun and engaging so i would say generally the impact was high um and we did have a good response, both from the athletes and, you know, athlete support personnel who, who rose to the challenge and took the quiz as well. And from dignitaries who came to the booth to find out more about what we were doing. Yeah. Doc, can you talk to us quickly about the, the reach of RADO? Because is it still headquartered in Barbados, the RADO? Um, yeah. Okay. So the, the reach. Yes. Yeah. Could you talk to us about the reach and how throughout the region it you know, it, 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 it governs and, and, and covers the ground mm -hmm. that it really wants to. Definitely. So the Caribbean Rado has 18 member countries across the region, but we do not limit our engagement to those 18 countries. So we work closely with, with JADCO, for example, in Jamaica, um, whether it's on testing programs or if there needs to be collaboration on any aspect of uh, doping control outside of, of testing um, at the Minister's Forum in, Jama in Jamaica in January, especially, there was Bermuda, who are not members of the RADO, but we do provide support when, when required. So in terms of our reach, yes, we have 18 member countries who delegate parts of their programs to us, whether that is the results management, if an athlete is, is found to be guilty of an anti-doping rule violation, or um, evaluating therapeutic use exemptions for athletes or um, assisting with their education programs. But we go beyond the English-speaking Caribbean. Some of our members are actually the Dutch-speaking Caribbean, Aruba, Bonnet, Curacao. And we also have partnerships with other countries outside of the Caribbean RADO. Uh, we work closely with the Caribbean Association of National Olympic Committees, for example, and their membership. So we've done training programs for their, their members as well, a, a lot of whom are not members of the Caribbean RADO. So when you talk about reach, while we may only have 18 member countries, we work very closely with the other um, countries who may not be members of the RADO, and we also work closely with the Pan RADO, which is kind of like the Caribbean equivalent in, in Latin America. Yeah, and I, I gather that there was, with regard to the treatment of the engagement that you had at the Carifta Games, because you were dealing with uh, with junior athletes, I, I gather that was there was a, a subtle treatment of, of, of the project, and the term doping wasn't used at all, and you were emphasizing clean sport because you're dealing with junior athletes. So it was a deliberate a, a, um, approach not to yeah. use doping or anti-doping, which is basically what you would do, but you weren't presenting it as such to the juniors. Exactly. So when you approach a junior athlete and you say doping or anti, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be a part of this. But when we change it and we say clean sport, it's all about rewriting the narrative and making it palatable. You know, so when you tell them about, you know, what values do you have or education is a priority, um, one of our main goals is to ensure that every athlete along that athlete pathway from the playground, children in schools, all the way up to the elite athletes who are going for podium finishes are educated. It means that you have to know um, your public. And so a junior athlete is going to respond more to clean sport, come win a prize, and then you slip in the education while you're talking to them. Or, oh my gosh, you just won a gold medal. So fantastic. What was your event, you know? And Alian and Mikel did such a fantastic job. And Rocky Sicharam from the Grenada Nado. In, in just making the athletes feel comfortable and talking about their sport and getting to know them. And once they were comfortable, then we had the opportunity to say, you know, just remember you need to eat properly, be careful what you put into your bodies, be careful of supplements. 
and the quiz, you know, kudos to WADA for having that tool because it never gets old. We did it at Caribbean, um, the Commonwealth Youth Games, sorry, in Trinidad and Tobago last year. 71 countries across the world descended on Trinidad and the outreach was amazing. And athletes at that age, it doesn't matter what country they come from, yeah. the Caribbean, Australia, um, you know, Canada, they all are interested in the information and they all are basically on the same levels. But if we rewrite the narrative in a way that's palatable to them, they were just on it. Everybody wanted a blue hat. They were wearing it right after. Mm -hmm. We had one of the teams, Guyana, do this dance. And we used that on social media to say, you know, what we are doing is not just fun, but it gives you information that you could use throughout your athlete life lifespan. Yeah, so important. Rewriting the narrative, as you said, I think is so, so important. Dr. Sasha, we want to thank you so much for stopping by on the Sportsmax Zone. And we hope to chat again soon as you continue, of course, educating and ensuring that the initiative is pushed in the right manner. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye. No, no problem. Of course, Dr. Sasha Sutherland there, the executive director at RADO. Taking a quick break. We'll be right back.